All right, take two. I had just gotten done saying that this is a nice time of the day because it's 6 p.m. approximately, plus or minus, and people have gone to, to dinner, and so I'm not going to have more people aside from like the turnarounds I get, people just looking and take off until sunset, near sunset. So I've got this time to work on my Carl Goldberg Viking. Now, as I stated before, it's going to be a two-channel radio, simply going from a gassy, the, let's say a Cox TD049 or 051, to electric. So I'm going to have a speed control and a rudder, two-channel. You might think you're limited to any aerobatic maneuvers with just a two-channel motor and rudder, but you really aren't. Because uh, in the old days, back before dinosaurs roamed the earth and people only had single channel radios, just a rudder, they were able to do um, rolls and loops by just holding hard right or hard left, putting it into a spiral dive, um, releasing it from its circular bondage, and when it straightens out, it's got great amount of speed, and then you can do stuff. You can do a loop. And if you do that loop with just hard right gaining speed, um, during the loop, hit hard right again, or hard left, and it'll do, say, a roll. And so aerobatics are actually um, possible with just a single channel. Anyway, I'm going two-channel motor and rudder because I have no talent for flying, none whatsoever. So I need a slow plane that's floaty that um, flies itself. And so I chose the Carl Goldberg Viking. And what I did today is I was working on the empennage. That's the vocabulary word for today, which includes the horizontal stabilizer and the fin and the rudder, or vertical stabilizer. Um, the, the fin and the rudder are currently drying up. They're just sheet balsa, but I had to do some um, reinforcement just because it's rather thin. And as you can see, I am working my way along. This was not on the plans to have a shear web, a webbing, a balsa sheet in these areas because the original one, the free flight with a dethermalizer, all these heavy words, it was designed to have just a hook to this peg and when either the fuse burned through the rubber band or else the timer clicked off, this whole thing, the empennage, would flip up to a 45 degree angle and it would come down as a parachute. I'm changing it. It's actually going to be rubber banded on so I have a hook on the back end to complement that peg so I will simply have it rubber banded on and that's going to hold the rubber band right there. Now one thing you notice is this. This is an impressive st horizontal stab, stab stabilizer. It is a flying stab stabilizer. It has an airfoil you can see and so the center of gravity on this back here so this thing is lifting it up and it's an incredible thing. The faster it goes, the more this flies, which kind of drives it level. And then they actually had up thrust to make it just climb, climb like a son of a gun. Well, as you can see by my most impressive stabilizer, this is going to be an impressive looking airplane. Now the philosophy, part two, the philosophy of things. I am fascinated by purpose-built things, just like purpose-built people. You have sprinters, you have long-distance people, you have hurdlers, power lifters, bicyclists, um, swimmers. They go to one extreme as far as, unless you're a triathlete, or a quintathlete. I just invented quint quintathlete. Oh, I, that's, I can't talk. Um, purpose-built. And this was purpose-built for zooming up into the sky and then gliding like a sailplane and finding thermals. Um, rising columns of air, they don't have to be s severe for something like this to catch them and just float forever until that the thermalizer hits and it goes down. So I respect the athleticism of this airplane. Ancient technology, it's not made by made out of carbon fiber laid up over foam cores and stuff. This is old school balsa wood. Um, but I still respect the heck out of it just because of the design. It's built well enough and designed well enough that you can lose it. You can't lose something more than, than losing it. And so this can be lost just as good as a 
modern discus launch glider, so I like it. Look at that. Maxi Flyart, who I reference, he's funny because he's a master builder of little rubber band jobbies, um, said that he doesn't like sanding. It's funny because sanding is actually my favorite part, simply because I take the roughness, like a rough diamond, and then put facets on it, but when you take a structure, it looks somewhat ugly and ungainly, and then you, just with a sanding block, sandpaper, you can transform it into this elegant, rounded shape. And so, my friends in YouTube land, that's probably why I'm such a fan of sandpaper with the paddle bows. You know, everything is connected. You pluck one strand of the spider web and the whole thing makes the spiders shake off. Is that this is the equivalent, the balsa wood airplane equivalent of one of my paddle bows. All connected. I wonder if I like the proportions of a paddle bow because somehow it reminds me of a propeller. Ah, ha, ha. I don't know. I'm just kind of messing around here. But I've got the nacelle sanded. I've got my dihedral braces on there, which was tricky. Um, the kit, as I stated before, pre-owned. person punched all the parts out. There were gaps in the information. And I had no idea what size balsa wood to use for these braces on here, or the, the little rails. Um, but I sorted it out. I sorted it out. And so this is empennage. The next time you shall see this, you will see the wings, the framework of the wings, the fin, on the, the rudder. I still am not clear on how I'm going to put the radio gear in here. Single channel. It'll have the speed control built into the receiver, most likely a small LiPo battery. That stands for liposuction, <laughs> lithium pole cat, I don't know, and a single servo, and I believe I'm going to make it easy by centering things, is near or thereabouts to the center of gravity, so there will be a little rectangular hole here for the servo to fit into, and then it'll be a simple matter with a push rod. I'm not going to do a pull-pull having cables in, in the control horns on either side of the rudder. It'll have push rods. I probably will use carbon, a modern material for the push rod and some guides. I'm not sure about the battery. I have no idea how big the battery will be. I might cut it out in the pylon and jimmy it in there somehow. I don't know. The, re the receiver can fit in this area. It'll be small. Motor here. Anyway, that is that. Have a fine day, and thank you for watching and enjoying the progress of my Carl Goldberg Viking. It's an amazing stab. Look at that. It, might, it probably doesn't fit into the frame because it's so giant. It's massive. If big is good, bigger is better. That's the skid on the front. Give you a minute to absorb that. It's an excellent skid. And there's my hook. And those are my pins, my, my straight pins. Fun stuff. Fun stuff.